we definitely need to talk about where we are in the show because I love the show. I just don't know a th- lot about it. I like, think that's a really good thing to talk about because I think I give off more knowledge than I actually have. Okay, so yeah, because I see you as an expert. Yeah, yeah. So we should talk about all this. Because I've it, I've never seen a single one. Yet you've done how many <laughs> tours? Sex and the City don't, tours. Don't say yet. I want to surprise. Surprise. You're now listening to The Bradshaw Boys, a podcast where three relatively grown men binge the iconic HBO series Sex and the City. So dust off those DVDs and grab yourself a white wine or even the Cosmopolitan and settle in. Take it away, boys. All right, Bradshaw Boys, put it, let's, let's clink our glasses and start, right? Yep. Ready? Bradshaw Boys. Ugh, okay. Okay. Well, welcome to the first official Bradshaw Boys podcast. One, two, three. Bradshaw, Bradshaw Boys. Boys. Uh, we started as a barbershop quartet, but then we were only three of us, so we decided to start a podcast about watching Sex in the City. Um, which brings us to our intro. Do we want to talk? How about we do introductions and then just get into what this is actually going to be? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Our name our and our relationship to the show. Okay. Um, I'll go first. Mm-hmm. My name's Corey Cavan, and uh, my relationship to the show is I started watching the show Sex and the City uh, through an old girlfriend's DVD set and... Then eventually, years later, realized I had my roommate's HBO Go password, and so I would just watch the show when I was really bored on Sunday nights. And my like real entree into it was, at some point, I was sitting on the couch, drinking red wine, eating dark chocolate, watching Sex and the City, <laughs> and I realized that in a movie, I would be my own female doppelganger. <laughs> so that's, that's how I. That's my entree into the show. So you're you're I love the show. You're so so far you're the resident expert, one for one. <coughs> um, great to start off a podcast with choking and coughing. Um, <coughs> excuse me, no, it, I'm not a resident expert. It sounds like you're caught in a lie. Where, like, where, I, <laughs> excuse me, no, 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 uh, no, 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 no. Uh, I'm not a resident expert. Here's the thing: with all that love and admiration for it, I think I've really only skimmed the surface. I bet in total I've seen four to five episodes. Wait, wait what? And one movie. I've seen the, I've seen the first movie in the theater, but I think I've I've maybe I've seen like seven episodes, but I've seen a lot of like dipping in and out of episodes, and I've and at one point I was like I'm gonna watch this whole show, and I only made it through a few, <laughs> and then I skipped around and I like watch an episode from a later season, so I know story points. This is how I am with like most information in my well, life. I I've just, always I I've, skim a lot of things. I've been walking around thinking that you're this I, expert. I I, I I agreed to do this show because I was under the impression that you had watched every episode no. multiple times, no. knew every character. No. Okay. There's not many shows that that's the case with with me. I've I've uh, I've only watched a few shows all the way through once. I've never watched a show through all the way through twice, but definitely not this show. All right. I well, haven't seen that, much of this show. That was a surprise to me. When we were initially talking, I was under the I was assumed that you had you were you know, could have written a, a book on Sex and the City with your knowledge. I could write a book on Sex and the City. It would be it's about a lot f- of his, be a lot of fan fiction of just stuff that I've made up about. Okay, it. all right. So anyone can write a book, by the way. You're you you're still the resident expert, yeah. okay? Despite uh, having only seen I, four or five so okay. far, one one for one. All right. Well, let's get into who you guys are, and then we'll talk about our mission. Okay. Um, I'll, go, I'll go. I'll go next. Okay. I think uh, my name is John Sieber, and. Uh, my introduction to Sex in the City was also through a girlfriend at the time. I I had heard uh, murmurs of the show in high school when everyone was watching it. I was definitely not allowed to watch it back then. Uh, I think the idea of watching that show uh, when I was younger and at that age would would uh, have been something that my parents would not have approved. Uh, so I was in uh, college dating a girl who, uh, even though we were raised similarly. Uh, had exposure to the show because she loved it and we watched it on you remember before netflix that uh they would you you could stream shows but through like the the cable providers yeah mm-hmm. it yeah, was yeah. like before hbo go i don't yeah, even like know on exactly. demand yeah, yeah. It, was yeah. Like, it was it was on, on demand. demand so i was really into ali g show and i would watch that and she would always make me turn it off and watch sex and the city and it started uh, as i would just kind of see it in passing and then uh, i was like 
Hmm. This is uh this is surprising. <laughs> this is uh interesting. I, I'm enjoying myself. <laughs> Ooh. And uh I, I uh probably with her, I would say in the background, I've probably been present through every episode, but I've probably only watched seven. Okay. Um, and uh I got recently got married and my wife is a huge Sex and the City fan. And so once again it's on in our house all of the time. Wow. And uh that's that's Still. when I found myself in, enjoying it. And uh I was home alone one night scrolling through the uh the possible Netflix options and I uh, found myself going it's, over to HBO. It's on Netflix? No, no, it's on HBO. Oh, so oh, okay. I went over to HBO and found myself alone one night enjoying some uh, wine watching Sex and the City. And, uh, huh. How do, how? Wow, we're more alike than I thought. <laughs> yeah, you guys are definitely far above my... I haven't seen a single episode. <laughs> I know all the characters' names. I know a lot about the locations around New York City. Because though I have... And this is how we started talking about it the night we came up with this idea is because I for years gave sex in the city tours around New York city and I've never seen a single episode. How disappointed are the people if they hear this, uh, this podcast that were on your tours? Do you think I was o- angry? No, I was open with them about them. If I told them we're on like a Greenwich village tour and I'm like, I'm just making stuff up or whatever. They would be mad if it was a historical tour. But for this, it's like you do about a half hour, you get the stories in, you, you're you like, so I'm taking you to some big spots. And then as fans, they know everything. So you just dip in and you're just like, so full disclosure, I've never seen it. And then they take over. So then you take them to the spots. And I'm like, so apparently this is um, where Miranda had a date with Steve. And they're like, oh my gosh. And then they want to tell you about it. So it actually worked as a nice little charming thing. Uh but and by the way, tortilla flats. That's where I was just talking about. <laughs> oh, really? See, I didn't know that. Miranda did, and Steve. Did they get blackout drunk in that episode and not re- remember the next day? Because I don't. I that's... think maybe they had a breakup there, or Ooh. they re re. I I'm excited to see that. I am too. It's funny. So when people would just be like, "Ah, oh, Steve," I'd be like, "I don't know who Steve is. I don't know, but I do know that him and Miranda went on a date at Tortilla Flats, which is still around over in the Meatpacking District. Oh yeah, it's. I've been there before. I've been to Tortilla Flats. I actually really love Tortilla Flats. So a, that's, this isn't a food podcast. We well, need, we need we, to do we'll, a we'll podcast this. at Tortilla Flats. We have many things planned like that. <laughs> we'll do that. Wait, hold on. You you never said who you are, though. Uh, I'm Kevin James Doyle. Okay. Kevin Doyle is an actor in Game of Thrones, and Kevin James is the zookeeper. And so he, I have to be Kevin James Doyle. He's also a PBMC, right? What's Paul that? Blart Mall Club. Yeah, Paul, yes. Paul he's PBMC. Club. So I've never seen an episode. You guys are both... I feel like clearly what brought us all together is that we wanted an excuse to watch every single episode, yes. which is what we're going to do. That's exactly what we're going to do. And that's the whole point of this podcast is that we uh, all kind of realized we should get together and watch every episode together because we all had, we'll, I feel like we'll talk about this in in length at some point, but we all had a night that we went out and me and John realized that we had seen we had mutual admiration for, admiration for the show. And I thought you were an expert. And I, which you just found out that I'm clearly not. Oh, boy. Um, I'm a great liar, apparently. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, and then we were like, oh, we should do this. And then you brought up the fact that you hadn't, uh, you'd never seen them but done tours. And then we were like, what if we tried to, the original thing was like, why don't we try to watch them all in, in, one... in one sitting? And we, we did the math. And figured out that I think that'd be something like 41 hours or something. And I feel like we were game to do it. And we were like, well, maybe we could live stream that. We'll still do it over a weekend sometime. Sure. Okay. At, once we once we finish these. <laughs> once we watch it through, we'll just do it again, but all at once. I will say that one of the reasons why the conversation came up and why I've avoided watching it is because I've always kind of decided to hate it. And then realized I've never watched it. There's a pride thing with Sex and the City. Yeah. It's, like, it's, you know, your friend who's never seen Star Wars. Yeah. And, and yeah. it's like, why have you never seen Star Wars? Well, it's because I've never seen it. I want to be that guy. Yeah. There's some of that with Sex and the City, too. And yeah. It's a good show. And that's why we're doing this podcast. We want you, the listener, to join us in this journey. Exactly. If you've never seen Sex and the City, if you are uh, you know, a male or female who was afraid of Sex and the City, uh, didn't want to touch it, didn't want to come near it. We we're opening up the ship. We want you to come on board and, and uh, you know watch watch these with us. And 
We live in New York City and have for nine years. And how long have you? Twelve, twelve and a half years. About eight. Eight years. So I'm not saying we're experts, but uh, I mean I know where Tortilla Flats is, you where Miranda and Steve had a date. Yeah. So exactly. That. But hey, listen. If they say that if you live in New York for ten years, you're a New Yorker. But if you know where Tortilla Flats is, you're the mayor. <laughs> That's what they say. That's, that's how, what I've heard they say. That's how Ed Koch that's, that's became right mayor. Next to the that's for, how Ed Koch became mayor. That's next to the forget about it sign, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's what it is. It's a longer sign. Yeah. It's like one of those green road signs with white writing. It's a lot longer. But. Do you know where uh, Tortilla Flats is? Ah, forget uh, about it. Forget about it. And then they you just do? stick a knish and a piece of pizza in your mouth. And they, <laughs> they, they move your head back and forth to chew those things for you. That's how it happens. Uh, well, uh, are you, should we watch episode one? I think we should watch episode one. I I kind of, yeah, we should watch episode one. I just, I feel like, okay, so you guys have seen The Wire. Have you seen The Wire? Yeah. Have you seen The Wire? I haven't. All right, I've let's tried, abandon tried, this podcast <laughs> for watching. I'm just kidding. I've tried to watch it. I, I, So I have narcolepsy. I'm sure we'll talk about this oh, a little more in the I podcast. I didn't know that. I do have, I have narcolepsy. See, a lot of this, let me interrupt you real quick and say that a lot of this podcast, the three of us are good friends. Yeah. And we know each other pretty well, I would say. Mm-hmm. And- but a lot of this podcast is the same way that like you go on a road trip with some people or you live in an apartment with some people. You're taking a journey together. And so like this is three friends who know each other really well, but are about to embark on something. And we're going to get to know each other and the show a lot better. We're going to make discoveries. We're getting on this ship. Of- <laughs> we're getting on this ship, like you said. So I, I, I do have narcolepsy, which uh, isn't as bad as as other people have it. I just if I get really tired, I can't not fall asleep and uh every time i've watched the wire i've I've tried it three times yeah and people that i trust so much in their opinions on what is good tv have told me to watch it three for three falling asleep like within 12 minutes so i need to figure out a way to stay awake through it well quick note about the wire this podcast is not about the wire but quick note about that you got to make it through the third episode okay and so that's why but the reason i bring up the wire is because a friend of mine told me years ago when i was starting the wire he just looked at me and he goes man I just want to grab you by the shirt like a college freshman and shake you and say, you have no idea what you're about to encounter and you'll never get to watch The Wire ever again for the first time. And I feel like we're about we're about to go watch the first episode together. We'll never be able to do this for the first time. It's a special it honestly is special. I've. I've withheld seeing that like clear box set everywhere and just judging people and girlfriends and stuff being like, oh, bad taste. I'm never going to watch it. This is where that ends. This, this is, is where it ends now, ends. and I'm like, you know what? I'm, Buck stops I'm here. opening up myself to a new a new world for ladies are about to come into my life. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Bold statement. A little racy. Yeah. Ooh, a little, a little racy bit. and uh, peaked out there on the mic because of my laugh. So. Yeah, you went hard on that one. Um, um, yeah, I think that we're – I feel like we're about to, like, jump off a cliff together. And I feel like for the listeners, I, if you've – if you've seen it, watch it again with us. If mm-hmm. you've never seen it, jump in. No judgments, and and we should all do it together. And just, I don't know. We're we're about to set sail from let them come the into New your York life. Harbor. <laughs> so so grab be, a Cosmo, boys. Get, grab Let's a, go. Grab a Cosmo, and we're going to be drinking white wine. I know at some point we'll do Cosmos. We're going to go pop. Um, a bottle of white wine, and we will uh, talk to you guys after we watch the first episode. All right. Sayonara. See you soon. Episode one, Sex and the City. At a birthday party for 30-something Miranda, Carrie and her friends vow to stop worrying about finding the perfect male and start having sex like men. Carrie has several encounters with tycoon heartthrob Mr. Big, while Miranda starts dating nice guy Skipper Johnston. Charlotte goes on a date with Capote Duncan, but when she tells him she won't have sex with him, he goes to a club and winds up going home with Samantha. Now, back to the boys. And the and Bradshaw, Bradshaw boys the are Bradshaw back. Boys are back. <laughs> the Bradshaw boys are back in town. The Bradshaw <laughs> boys are back in town. The Bradshaw <laughs> boys are the Brads are back. The Brads are back. <laughs> the Brad- so fucking. <laughs> Absolutely. End of the episode. Wow. Such a so good wait, line. Let's just for our listeners. And by the way, you've you just heard us talking before, and then you probably heard a musical interlude, and now we're back. So if you didn't, go find it on YouTube and watch the pilot episode 
of Sex and the City, created by Darren Starr. I would, uh, buckle up. Buckle up so, for some buckle of the, up for the most thrill amazing ride in old it's taxis. made up names ever. <laughs> what was the best <laughs> one? I mean, uh, I mean the Capote best one. Capote Duncan? Capote Duncan. For sure. Capote Duncan. Right off what, the- who were his parents and what kind of... What kind of professor literary psychopaths who abused their child named a computer com, computer 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 Duncan, computer Duncan. Computer Listen, Duncan. here's the thing: is when Capote Duncan was gallivanting around New York City in the late '90s, it, it was crazy. Everyone was talking about Capote Duncan. Mm. <laughs> and there's one thing that he needs, and it's to have sex tonight. Tonight, <laughs> that's it. It's like I gotta have sex tonight. So wait, this is so the episode was called episode one pilot is that what it was I called? think it's called sex in the city it's called okay. sex, in, sex the city. in the city yeah which is great because which is what is capote that's what capote duncan needs sex they should have just called it capote duncan i wish they would have here's the thing i i don't know if it happened but i don't think it did but it is a travesty that there's not a spinoff series about capote duncan i and think it was called wall street the movie it's, not, and it's the not adventures of capote and skipper <laughs> <laughs> it's called i need to have sex Tonight. Tonight. Capote and Skipper, naughty and nice. <laughs> Capote and Skipper are the real life Lilo and Stitch, right? Yes. yes. So wait, who? Okay. So he. So let's just get into it. He was in the. Okay, so the the episode starts. The few th- the first few things that I noticed first is uh, is just that it's sh- not shot in widescreen. No, it's shot in four three because it was it came out in ninety eight. Is that what it was? Ninety eight, ninety seven. We'll check on that. I, but did, yeah, it's shot I at, didn't notice that. It's shot in 4.3. I don't notice things like that. Yeah. Well, it's just, it's we're so used to it now, like any TV you watch is in widescreen. Yeah. So it and all sense, your but phones it, and everything, every screen you watch is on widescreen. It, it's like, what was this show made on? Instagram? Nice. Because it's a square. I was kidding. It was, it, so it came out in 97, 98? 98. It came out in 98. We've got confirmation on that. So it was 98. So it was 4.3. So what that was, was the first thing you noticed. What was... Uh, Sarah Jessica Parker in before this she was in the this? witch movie yeah that's all I know I don't know a lot about movies I don't know I don't know what the Hocus witch movie is. Pocus is that what she was no, in Hocus, Hocus Pocus, Pocus was yeah I mean this is clearly landmark for her now yeah, looking this, at it after no, this but was this her, was yeah I, I wonder if it was like weird at the time if it was like oh you're doing an HBO show what was Capote Duncan in prior to this we'll check on that as well I feel like it was so. What people don't know, the first impressions is it was in four three, and sure. also that this is actually a spinoff from Capote. Dun- it was. <laughs> <laughs> this is a spinoff of Capote Duncan's uh, college years yeah. about him being a football player. Um, yeah. So y- what you noticed? Well, actually, I'll say this. I said this before we watched it. I hadn't seen the pilot. I thought I had. I hadn't either. I've seen. I think the second or third episode, but I'd never seen the pilot. You mm-hmm. hadn't either. No, my, so, my wife was telling me about something that we'll get to comparing um mr big to to donald trump so i knew mm, some things in, in, in the in the pilot but i had i had never seen it wow so yeah none th- of us had seen the pilot no i didn't maiden voyage maiden voyage i didn't realize that mr big just because obviously culturally over the years you hear oh mr big mr big i w- thought that mr big would have if i would have assumed before he got introduced in season four or something when it's like Oh, we need her to kind of st- sort of land on a lover. Mm-hmm. Like she's gallivanted around, but now we need to find her, like her partner. And then Christopher Noth comes in. I didn't realize he's episode one. So we'll we're see. like, we'll see what twenty happens. minutes in. Land on a lover. Also, coincidentally, the second spinoff movie that <laughs> Capote Duncan's in. Land on, <laughs> land a, lover. on a lover. He's Mr. got to land on a lover tonight. Mister Big shoots shoots down. Samantha hard 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 because yeah, he wants something more well, he only smokes Cohibas and she was <laughs> offering her some of that Dominican shit and he didn't want it Mr. Big. No, he, she offered him a Honduran oh a hon- a he hon- only smokes Cohibas he only smokes Cohibas <laughs> I smoked a Cohiba in in high school like when I graduated high school and was going off to college my friend had one he got it out and I was like <laughs> 10 minutes into it and I was like hold on and I puked over my porch he's like hey Kevin <laughs> are, are you puking and you turned with puke on your mouth and you just said Absolutely, <laughs> can't wait to get to that. Oh, just it, I. One thing that I think is great about this is that I've thought this before when I watched Sex and the City, but like all the women, I don't know if they if they said this, but I think all the women, all the female characters, the main characters of the show are in their mid thirties at this point, and so they're talking a lot about like men in their thirties having sex like a man. That's like a huge thing, but like. 
it's it's an empowering show for women in that they're all these single professional women in their mid thirties are trying to date, and it is just these like caricatures of men that are just they're like oh yeah man i work out at the gym and i'm in my 30s and i can do what i want in new york yeah yeah such cartoons of these guys yeah and And then there's skip and you know what i want a more three-dimensional vision of who capote duncan is I want to build that. I I, I hope he, that he's lived forty two years in this city, and he's he's done a lot. Not just wanting sex, or maybe that's it. Maybe uh, th- maybe that's all there is to Capote Duncan. I think all Capote Duncan needs at the end of the day is to have sex tonight. Tonight. I think that it is interesting having lived here long enough, and and have obviously like they all have way more money than us, and they live a different life. But I also feel like. It was way more like this show is about like the art world and like PR and like all the like I, I, f- I feel like watching it. I related a lot to it. And then there's also way more of a capital now on just like like Brooklyn and being a hipster and all that stuff. So it's like, yeah, I, I feel like when you think of New York now, the Wall Street and like art parties are less of why people move to New York. Or maybe that's just is, not that, my is life. that because you're. Yeah, is that because you're not part of that life? Like, is it because you're not, you know, in high rises and art galleries and and clubs like chaos? Yeah, yeah. But instead, you know, you're How do hanging you think out at chaos tur- was spelled K A O S for sure, okay. uh, for sure. Not, I, I would wager C-H-O-S. a lot of money that it starts be, with a, it's a K. There yeah. had to be some sort of like a umlaut or something in there too. And I do just want to say uh, this podcast is brought to you by Club Chaos. <laughs> club Chaos, Love the K- hottest club in Midtown Manhattan, where you can have sex. Tonight, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, this podcast is brought to you by Stamps. dot com and Club Chaos. Club I believe chaos. Ca- they said Chaos was on on. Uh, oh no, it's it's it was, the, he. It's on it West there? Broadway, and uh, is it a real club? I, I don't know. At the but time, clubs it, clubs never last that long. My, so true. so it, it's interesting because we all have lived in New York for a combined like. Uh, Twenty five. Uh, who lived in years. Manhattan? I've never lived in Manhattan. I, I lived in Manhattan. I've lived in Manhattan. I lived in Manhattan for six and a half years. Where'd you live in Manhattan? I lived. I lived in four apartments. I lived at 109th in uh, Amsterdam. Not Manhattan. not Manhattan. That is Manhattan. It is Manhattan. It is Manhattan. But it's not Manhattan. It, <laughs> I did not live downtown Manhattan. Okay, here's a question. I, I, I'd you be would say, to, what I'd would be you say, say about the Upper East Side? That's Manhattan. It is. I would say that if you if you met someone and for two weeks they were just like, they're like, yeah, I live in Manhattan. And then after a while, like it came up in conversation that they lived at like 171st in Washington Heights, then you'd be like, totally true. I wouldn't necessarily trust that person. Felt a little duped. Yeah. I also, I I would disagree with that, but I would also say that 109 and 171st are also two different things. This is not a geographical podcast and people are checking out. I'm, I'm making I a disagree. prediction here. I think I'm going to come in with the prediction that at some point in Sex and the City that they're going to have someone living in your location that will say it's not and they're going to have the same debate or one of them will be turned off by the fact that they live there because it's not as kevin said manhattan Hmm. that's i i 100 it's safe money it's safe money for sure i i agree with you i agree with you and i do think i will agree to say that i have not lived below 100th street in manhattan and most people that live in cool manhattan would say oh you don't live in that although these days it's different where like people live in Harlem and Harlem is is in the past like eight years or whatever. Mm-hmm. It's it's like a quote unquote cooler neighborhood in that sense. And so yeah. people might have a different opinion of that. Yeah. No, I and I say that as someone who lived in Harlem for five years and people are like, you don't live in Manhattan. You live at 145th <laughs> Street. And this is my axe to grind. I lived in Manhattan. <laughs> you absolutely did. And I, I'm not, a, I'm not a supporter of that argument. It's more other people that I know that it's like when you say Manhattan, <laughs> you're not a supporter of that argument. But you did place your hand on my knee and patronizingly <laughs> start this entire debate. Yeah, you you <laughs> pulled you pulled a Capote Duncan. You on pulled him. a Capote Duncan. Listen, where's Capote Duncan live? Tribeca, wherever he He's can have sure. sex He's tonight. Sure. Um. So I lived in 46 in between 8th and 9th. I lived in Hell's Kitchen for a year. Ladies and gentlemen, that is located in Manhattan. It is in Manhattan. Yeah. Is Manhattan. And, uh, yeah, I don't really have anything. There's, there was nothing. We're just saying whether or not we lived in Manhattan. 
right? Was there any other no, it was talking just, points on that? It was just that, that it was like, um, it, it's interesting watching the show and then seeing, it's in New York City, but there's so many different New York cities. Right. And I never really considered, I was like, oh yeah, this is like rich art gallery. Like I would also higher... say that you keep saying art gallery. I don't know if I pulled art gallery a ton from that. I pulled more like money, finance. Like, I don't know. Like Club Chaos didn't seem like an art gallery I, I have a question. So out of those, out of everything that we saw in that episode, what was the least Manhattan? And I did air quotes. And what was the most Manhattan thing that you saw? Um, I, hmm. I think by far the most Manhattan thing that I saw yeah. was when... Miranda was waiting in line at one of those like skeezy delis, like <laughs> like holding the the. Like, you said like, least. The, no, that was the most That's Manhattan most. thing I by agree. far. I agree. And and I, so I'm six four, and so a lot of what I gauge uh, an accurate. What's and that? what that was is like where you just you go weigh the food, right? It's yeah, yeah, it's one that, of those. Yeah, yeah. But but the first thing I noticed, other than the the twin towers being in the opening credits, right. was was the 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 girl that she's writing about, Elizabeth. Uh, she's in the back of a cab and has like eight or nine feet of leg room. And every time I get into a cab, I'm like s- like squeezing my big ass legs in the cab, bruises on my knees. And I'm like, that right there, that doesn't exist. <laughs> that little lady sitting back there with 10 feet of space. And I know there's luggage in the camera back there, but that's not Manhattan. I I think that's true. But one thing that I didn't notice about that was I noticed how different cabs were because now all cabs – are these like hybrid Toyotas? And up until like 2008 or nine, cabs were Crown Victorias, which had way more space because they had giant bench seats in the back and they were like gas guzzling cabs and those don't exist anymore. Mm. And back then they were even older school Crown Vics that might have had, they're like old cop cars. Huh. So they might have had even more space back then. Huh. So, so they were like a different, it was like a different, I noticed so that a Man- lot. This is Manhattan before I was even in Manhattan. You are right, though, that the the cabs now, not the Nissan ones or There's the Toyotas, no but the the ones They're that were so just much tighter. The car, yeah, there was. It's like you get in and, yeah. What about you, Kevin? What was the, the most, most the most and least Manhattan or or New York thing that you saw? Um, I think the most, the most new most New York most Manhattan. I think. Uh, just just people one thing that doesn't age like some their fashion or certain things like age but one thing that's like when you just see a giant rush of people mm-hmm. walking down the street going to work you're like oh that's the thing that like will never change that's just always what it is and then when it's just like these are like women in new york with their when she was doing that voiceover and it's like oh that's the exact same thing now if you go to like sixth avenue at 10 a.m. That's everyone with their coffee right. going to do the exact same thing, the exact same jobs. And it's like, oh, yeah, publishing has changed. People don't go to bookstores anymore. People, don't, But it's like that type of thing. It's still the exact mm-hmm. same thing. Mm-hmm. Only maybe people. The rat race. I mean, the yeah, rat race. The whole the crowds of people yeah. m- migrating towards their office. Yeah. Hung over, holding coffees, yeah. disheveled business clothes. Yeah. That'll never change. Yeah. That and then the main and then the main. What just watching people smoke inside is like insane. Yeah, yeah, that was I. That's so fascinating to me about this show, and I love it of people smoking inside everywhere. I guess it would have been every show. When did that law? We should find out when that law was. But it, what a great change that I don't. I don't think anyone really pushed against. I'm sure at the time there were people pushing against it. But yeah. what a great change that it's like. Yeah. You could just smoke inside anywhere. Yeah, is crazy. Yeah, yeah. There's like a ton of smoking. Um, I one thing that I thought was very Manhattan was that I think it's Miranda or Carrie, but they're it they're at a coffee shop. No, it's the one it's the British woman at the beginning mm-hmm. when she like tells Carrie her story. They're at a coffee shop, but it doesn't look like a cool coffee shop. It looks just like a diner with coffee. like coffee with those uh those things that you pour sugar out of that have the little flip lid where you can just yeah, pour yeah. tons of sugar. And but and so, I, some sometimes people put rice in those. Have you you yes, know what I'm, it's to dry out the sugar because rice absorbs water and and and, uh, and fix iPhones. It fixes iPhones. God, that makes a lot of. I'm There's learning little, a lot tonight. I know, right? This is an informational podcast. Wait, so so you've only seen five episodes of Sex and the City? 
<laughs> I just know a lot about diner sugar things. But I noticed that, that to me, that is a very kind of old school Manhattan thing is coffee shops like that. And now in Manhattan, coffee shops are like like good coffee. Mm-hmm. Like it's like a pour over, blue town. bottle, stump yeah. town. But that was just Irving like a random Irving Farm. They started it all. Um, but uh, <laughs> this is not a podcast about coffee. Shout out to our roasters. Thank you, Irving Farm. Thank you very much for your beans. But I, like that coffee shop, I noticed because that always seemed like a Manhattan, New York. Then you go to a diner and you just get like coffee. Get like a ninety nine cents coffee. No, yeah. Now there's the eighteen dollar coffee in exactly. the city. It's crazy. Is yeah. it really eighteen dollars? There is an eighteen dollar cup of coffee in in my office, and it's cra- I, I got it because they uh, I had one of those loyalty cards, and I got a free coffee, and so I just walked down there, and I was like, I'll try the uh, the purple Geisha Supreme uh, Deluxe Edition. And they're like, that'll be eighteen dollars. And I slid across the little wood coin, and they like kind of looked at it. They brought it out, and then the very next day, there there's a sign, little sign there that said, "Free coffees only for coffees four dollars or less." Dude, <laughs> that is, that's great. That's awesome. That's such yeah. a baller move. Break like breaking the uh, the system there, like like beating the the uh, getting the free coffee and and taking it down. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's great. I love that's that. One of my, one of my proudest achievements. That's a great achievement. What? Um, how was it? Was it good? It, you know, the guy, the guy who gave it to me, he said, like, this is like, it's like getting a really nice drink or like a really expensive bottle of wine, and it, it was, it was like that. When I was drinking, it was very aromatic and like rich, and it's definitely not something you could have every single day, and I don't think I'll ever get it again. But it was definitely an experience that. I didn't have to pay for, so it was it was nice. But how many people would would love to yell at you for doing that, and for being like, who would ever do that? That spend twelve dollars on Coors Light at <laughs> <laughs> at a baseball game or concert all the time. Yeah, and and it's like you know, um, well, yeah, the whole uh, the whole coffee shop thing. I feel like there's just so many like. N- just new cultural things that I feel like we're always going to be bumping into on this because it's like, it's a show that it's, this would be the equivalent to in 1999, us watching like welcome back Cotter, you know, it's how yeah. old is this? It's 20, 20 years old. Oh, the, the 20 year anniversary will be coming up in June. Yeah. Of, of the airing of this. So we're 20 years old. We're not 20. We'll, ha- we'll obviously do a big release, something big on our, Oh yeah, a that's, huge. That's the episode where we'll have the four women on. Yeah, we'll have all the actresses on and Darren Star. It'll be huge. It's going to be gigantic. What about? Actually, we're only going to have on Capote Duncan. That's what. Yeah, that's the only that's guy that's going to be. That's <laughs> John the down. only guest. John looked down. I had to look at my name. notes. <laughs> what about uh, uh, Capote, Capote Duncan. Duncan? Can we try to make Let's, a goal for the rest of this podcast to somehow bring him up every single episode? I think we have to at I, this point. The Capote de- it was spinoff podcast. Yeah. Um, why don't why don't you do you just want to someone or we'll do it together. Just explain what happened in the episode. Mm. Just go through. Let's just do the plot sure. yeah, of what happened sure. with all the characters and everything. Yeah. Because it was I mean, I feel like we're so used to seeing pilots now because uh, even when before when this show was on. You would just watch whatever's on TV, but you wouldn't always get to start at the beginning. I feel like we're so accustomed to watching pilots now and know it's a pilot. Right. But I'm like, I mean, definitely didn't seem like, oh, this is like they didn't find their footing yet. I was like, this is pretty great. Yeah. I thought it was good. Yeah. I Yeah. I mean, I think, okay, so setting up, mm-hmm. let's just all jump in here. Like, mm-hmm. So it starts out with this British woman in a cab with way too much room in the back so, seat. So much room. So much luggage also. <laughs> And um, she comes into the city. She's British. Was she a writer or something uh, like that? English, English. She's English and a journalist. Major uh, yeah, something, or something like that. Like yeah. That. She comes in. Her name is Elizabeth. Her name is Elizabeth. She meets a guy who seems like a powerful. Uh, he seems like a lawyer or some sort of like finance type finance, guy. Yeah. Wall Street guy. He made two million a year. Yeah. Um, they hit it off at a party where he says, "I think I know you." And she plays hard to get, and then he makes some. Uh, he, this doesn't matter, but he basically he basically yeah. he basically gets her, and she's like, "I think you do know me." They have a wild romance, 
and then they start looking at places together, which that to me was the most un-New York thing is how that was a Victorian house that they were touring around. But that probably just shows how much money I have that I've yeah. never well, looked two at million, a place like if that. If that dude 20 years ago is making Make $2, two million, million a, year. a year, and maybe that's the move too, that it's like I do this and now I get my wife and I buy the townhouse or yeah, whatever. that's true. Yeah. But then they, uh, he, they're going to go have dinner with his parents after this wild romance and then he calls and says my mom's sick. And then he doesn't call her for two weeks, and that's and then he basically just like lets her go, and then she finds Carrie Bradshaw. Wait, did they ever resolve? Like, is his mom okay? <laughs> I don't think so. Oh I, we God. should check in. I wonder if that ever comes. That's got to come back up in season three. I can't believe they didn't resolve that. I'm, I feel really I'm pretty bad sure for that him. his mom got Dunkin'd, If you know what I mean. <laughs> Wait, his mom's not okay because she ended up with. Truman, I mean, uh, Capote. Truman Capote, <laughs> Truman, Duncan? Capote Duncan. Truman Capote Duncan. Oh, man. In it, cold blood. In cold blood. <laughs> We're going to say that. Well, she went down the road. She was on her period. That, that's <laughs> <laughs> in cold blood. Is that what in cold blood's about? No, it's oh. about a murder. I know. I'm not <laughs> an idiot. Come on. <laughs> Listen, I know <laughs> that I think I lived in Manhattan at some point, but I'm not a dummy. All right. <laughs> um, okay, so. So that beginning part happens, and that brings us to Carrie Bradshaw. And and she she asks, uh, she's she's writing a column on women who have sex like men, and exploring uh, what what that looks like, what what different how different women have sex, what they're expecting from sex, right? And uh, is it possible for women to have sex like a man, and what that means to have sex like a man? Right. And uh, brought up a lot of interesting questions. It did. Um, and then that brings us to this thing that. I think we should point out here, but maybe not spend a lot of time on, but it brings us to this run of people that are speaking to camera. Most of them are guys sweating, working out. They look like they're in a 1980s Reebok commercial. Yeah. And they're uh, they're talking. To, but the speaking to camera thing. It doesn't that, happen it, at a certain point. It's, it's like, I think it's only season one or maybe season one and two. I also wondered this today. Because even Carrie Bradshaw, she looked she at looks, the camera. It made me think about a High Fidelity the John Cusack movie. Yeah. A Cameron Crowe film. The Jack Black movie. The Jack Black. <laughs> ooh, yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, there's a lot of, like, her speaking to camera and these weird interviews mm-hmm. to camera. Yeah. It's, how, it's how you first meet Miranda and yeah. uh, Charlotte, I yeah. think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Samantha. Samantha. Oh. I don't think Samantha. I think Samantha's just at the table. Oh, uh, yeah, at the they, birthday at party. At the birthday. But it's for sure how you meet Miranda. She's at the buffet line. Yeah. And then Samantha, I think, is... She's, Charlotte's at work or something like right, that. That's yeah. why I thought of art dealer because they go to an. She's an art dealer. It says oh. below, and they're the English girl and the guy are at an art. There is a lot. You're right. Yeah. There is a lot of art in the episode because then that guy's got art in his apartment. So they, uh, and also I believe uh, Capote Duncan's middle name is Art. Capote Art Duncan. That's his middle name. <laughs> that's his full name. Capote Art Duncan Jr. Because his father was Capote Art Duncan Senior. Senior, exactly. Well, also, speaking of uh, surnames, did anyone notice that Miranda is an Esquire? Yeah. 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 Because she's a lawyer? She's a lawyer. So, yeah, she's mm-hmm. an Esquire. Mm-hmm. She's a smart lady. What's an Esquire mean? Uh, I think it's a magazine. It was Esquire. <laughs> I don't know. What is it? Is an Esquire mean that it, you're... Does it mean that you're a lawyer? I think it means... I ESQ? Yeah, Esquire. Are you asking me a question? ESQ? Is that Wait, Spanish? What does it? what are you guys saying, though? I'm saying it, it said her name, Miranda, uh, Miranda, what is her last I, name? Miranda Esquire? Or no. Miranda something Esquire. You're saying it's like PhD or something, right? Yes. Yes. I it's, believe it's, so. It's a sir, it's a, it's not a surname. Sorry, I said that. It's a, it's a title. It's, yeah, like. I didn't, I didn't realize. Uh, what's that mean? Uh, it means, well, I don't know. That's what we're asking. I think her right? name's Miranda Hobbs. Right? Miranda Hobbs Esquire. Esquire. Miranda Hobbs, so comma, Esquire. It would just be like Miranda Hobbs, PhD, if she were a doctor. Exactly. Okay. Are, are we dumbasses? Is this something that I think that, everyone... that there's going to be a lot of things that come up in this podcast that either we are dumbasses or we're just learning. Which, is, which is fine. That's okay I, if we are. I'm I know okay my. I know the lawyer I use, his name is blank, blank, Esquire. Okay, okay. so okay. And that just means that's got to mean they're a lawyer. But, but that, other than that, I, I remember that's what, how Bill and Ted introduced himself, oh, right, themselves. Oh, Bill S. Preston Esquire. Bill S. Preston Esquire. He's clearly not a lawyer. He's not a lawyer, but it means you're like he, in, in smart. Yeah, he, I mean, he needs to kidnap historical figures to, to pass 12th grade history. So I don't think he's a lawyer. I don't think he could pass But he might be. he might be a genius. We're <laughs> peeking a picture right now of... Miranda, who, what's the actress's name? Uh, Cynthia Nixon. Yes, Cynthia, yeah, Cynthia Nixon. Nixon. Um, 
beautiful, beautiful picture. That's that's must be more current. We have a Sex in the City wiki that we're gonna be sex, referencing. Sex in the wiki. We'll be. I feel like not that. not until after the episode. We just yeah. have. Um, well, wait. Let's continue. Let's continue with this episode recap. So yep. we meet all these people. Yep. We we have the talking to camera, which is we know is a thing that happens now, and then we go. Th- we get through that, and Carrie gives this uh, premise of like, "Can you have sex like a man?" And then she tries it. She also meets. Um, she has lunch with that guy. Uh, her her gay friend Stan Stanley, Lee. who's and a big character throughout the, and he's a talent agent. He is. I'm excited he'll be back because <laughs> I oh, like him. Stanley's great. Like, oh, cool. But he he's a talent agent that only has one client who has mm. a billboard in Times Square. So underwear 10, model. Ten percent of that, you're doing fine. You're doing great. But then she runs Especially into, back I believe, then in New Kurt, York, things 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 had to be much cheaper. She bounces into uh, one of her ex lovers, Kurt Harrington, I believe his his name was. Yeah, Kurt Harrington. Kurt uh, Harrington, also clearly s- smoking inside and smoking outside. Kurt was smoking outside. He was a stud. I think he's probably smoking only on the outside. I bet on the inside things aren't well with Kurt. <laughs> well, there was that was the whole the whole thing. He, she was like, he was the best sex I had in my life, and she was just gonna go up and her friend, talent agent, what's his name? I'm gonna uh, Stanley. 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 I think I Stanley was like, don't names. do this, don't do this. He she goes up to him and is like, my place, three p.m. Then they go there, they have some sex. She's he's down below, so I think he was, yeah, I going think, down on her, right? I think so. I think yeah, they were having sexual activity, but it was only she's receiving, he's giving. Mm-hmm. Maybe they had sex, and it's just like, oh, that finished. He's like, no, well, no, because he was turn. disappointed. Yeah, he was like, disappointed. Yeah. Like, he I didn't, think that's all that happened. He was unsatisfied with that. So, do you think they had intercourse? I don't think I don't so. Think so. I think the only the only sexual activity that happened was he was pleasuring her. Mm-hmm. And then with his her, mouth. And I think his, that, that was We don't know. Point. We don't know how, what he was doing down there. The camera didn't show, which is the great thing about Use some cinema. imagination, Kevin. In the director's cut, there was <laughs> clearly he was wiping his face. He's I right. thought in the director's cut, <laughs> Capone don't. Duncan walks in <laughs> and goes, had it, and walks out and says, I got to have sex tonight. Again, again, fucking lootly. So, so yeah. So she, he he finishes up with her, and, yeah. and he's and like, he "Hey, says, my turn. it's my turn." Yeah, which, that, very romantic. Which, of course, yeah, that would whatever. That's what, that's what you say. John, I, you're I my married. turn. That's that's got, that seems like a romantic thing. My turn. <laughs> Watching that, I was I was simultaneous two things. I was like, interesting storyline, and also totally support her. Also, I mean, that's that's a bold move. That that's intense, but that's kind of <coughs> girls' lives, isn't that? Isn't that girls' lives having orgasms? My more, turn. Never <laughs> in guys all the time. My turn. <laughs> so so then, what I found interesting is is, and we we can get into this. So, so she had, for all intents and purposes, sex like a man. She she got her pleasure. She got her pleasure, and, and then, then she, she was left. like, "I got to go back to work." And she de- and she described it as she was leaving. And I, I took some notes here. She yes. said it's the first time that she felt incredible and alive. I'm not sure if she said the first time, but she, she described said, that I did feeling feel incredible as and alive. incredible and alive. Mm. Uh, pretty interesting. Yeah. What are your guys' thoughts on that? I mean. I, I think you'd have to look into seeing I obviously I think the show will explore this but it's like I, you probably felt incredible in life and then most guys that are having sex like men probably are having less fun than you think so it's like of course that probably feels great then in the long run probably runs out of steam yeah, and I'm not I'm not trying to be a skipper here if you guys catch my my drift but What's a it, skipper you know, we just watched the show, Kevin. Oh, is he the nerd? Is he the nerd? The nerd. But if I if we'll I were if I were, were having a rendezvous with with a female companion, and I were just to you know get my pleasure, and then and then she were to say my turn, and I would just stand up and walk out, I wouldn't feel incredible and alive. I don't think that's no, that's not that's inaccurate. But I think I, for most guys, but there's probably. If I a got lot. a blowjob at 3 p.m. and then just went back to work, there would be a decent feeling, though. <laughs> just like, I, even even if a, a, I a, would, I would the be female tough. rolled over and said, "My turn," and you just and you just bailed, walked out, I'd I wouldn't to, have done that. But. You also got to think. I mean, listen. I know we have different jobs, but I'd have to go back to work. They'd be like, "Where have you been?" Like, I feel like I'd be all over the place. Like, I'd I was like, getting a blowjob, or I, were you eating 
Eating? I don't. What's the? Well, if if the rules were reversed, it person, was happening to me. I would. Uh, I, I don't know. I was trying to make. A, I was trying to make a joke that I would have to really like explore my schedule. I have to lie to get out of work for that yeah. to happen. You know, I'd smell like smoke in that scenario. I feel like <laughs> I feel like that's what a lot of this is going to be. Is like that couldn't really happen. I guess though. I'm oh, sorry, but you. no. I think the the logistics of it, of course, are like that's crazy. You just have time on th- I guess she's a writer she I guess she's have. a writer so she can do, you know she's a writer who else is a writer Truman Capote who else probably writes about his own sexual ass oh Truman Capote is Truman Capote not a writer yeah he's a writer he's a writer yeah. but the the uh <laughs> I was you know Capote Duncan I'm sure he writes about his own sexual escapades in his journal in Truman his journal. Capote Esquire writer <laughs> <laughs> um but it's interesting you say that though because yeah I would feel bad if yeah. I did that, I, I would. I wouldn't. Fe- I wouldn't feel empowered. I'd feel terrible. But because that's happened to her so many times, do you think she's like, I feel good because I'm turning the tables. I'm flipping the script. I know what it's like to be able to walk out and do that. Like I think it would have been a deeper thing to say, "Ooh, this actually feels bad." But in her scenario, she's like, "These men don't feel bad. I feel great about doing that." Mm. But. That's setting off the whole premise of the show, which is just like, look, I'm gonna have sex like a man, you know, or I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take back my sexuality. I'm gonna do this on my terms, without being desperate, because some of the other characters deal with that too. Yeah, but all the characters, I think, I think every character, and I, I think it's worth exploring a little bit. Every character got exactly what they wanted in the show. If you look at the four main characters, mm. you have Carrie, you have uh, Miranda, Miranda. You have Samantha and Charlotte, mm-hmm. and and I think it, it's interesting to think about what what was what were they all after in that episode, uh, and and did they did they get it and and did it come to fruition? What was really interesting is Carrie her the arc of her story, it ended the exact same way that the Elizabeth the girl that she wrote about started. Mm-hmm. She she got in the car. She met someone. Hey, I think I see you before. He he didn't ac- actually say that, but like the, the beginning of this great romance where she doesn't have you don't have a chance for her to see if you know Mister Big is a creep or not. It's right. just like the first initial spark, and she's like it took her breath away. She felt like she was like under covers or couldn't sleep or whatever like that. But that's the exact same way that that first girl probably felt. Yeah, yeah. Also, uh, from a story point, from Carrie. What's interesting is she says she feels amazing. I think this is when it happens. She walks out and says she feels empowered, and then she bumps into Mr. Big. Right, yeah, exactly. So it there's a thing where it's shit. like, yeah, so like she feels empowered, and she's like trying to have sex like a man, but then that in, she ends up running into the thing that's going to screw her up emotionally, and that she can't just walk away from things emotionless because she's going to like be like, oh, I feel empowered. I just, by happenstance, ran into the person that is going to be the one that's like, like, sticks in my soul forever yeah. and hor- horrible lesson for children watching the episode to n- not get in cars with strangers i mean she just hops right in that oh, that yeah. automobile completely i feel like that's one of those things w- imagine if people explained what uber pool was going to be <laughs> though like 10 years ago and now that's all it is you meet a stranger on the internet and you get in a car with them but here's the thing you don't even know the person driving <laughs> yeah you don't know the driver you f- and You'll you'll be holding a mini computer in your hand though, so you don't actually have to make eye contact or conversation with them. You can just do you scroll t- through your friends' pictures and just bite your tongue and wait for time to pass. Um, okay, so I was interested. To, I'm interested in what you said that everyone got what they wanted. Well, Who did else? They, I mean, so so Sh- Charlotte, she she didn't want she didn't want to have sex. She wanted to go out, have a nice evening. And then, and then, and not, and be in, and have love. Have love, and, and also believe have in interest, believe in love, have some romance. She right. romance. Some romance. And she got, she got that. that. She got that. Until girl. that guy hopped in the cab. We're jumping ahead in the time of the episode, but until that guy hopped in the cab with her and went back to Club Chaos, K O S Umlaut. I thought, I have written down before it happened because I was like, this is definitely, I definitely was wondering, is Charlotte going to have sex? And can we backtrack real quick? It wasn't. It wasn't just that guy, Corey. It was, that was that was Capote. Good God, I'm so sorry. That was, that was that was Mr. D. That was that was Capote D. What were we, sorry? What were you saying, Kevin? Yeah, sorry. 
My apologies, Capote. <laughs> we got sidetracked. I just, I just. Do you think guys think the CD, the music, like you know what you played c- music on CDs, mm-hmm. was that named after Capote Duncan? <laughs> <laughs> after his initial, he's. I mean, he is a revolutionary character. Did they name CDs after him? He he was around for everything. There's there going to be a Forrest Gump movie, but it's just <laughs> about Capote, Capote Duncan. Duncan. Life is like right. a box of having sex tonight. <laughs> <laughs> You never know what you're going to get. I do. I'm getting it tonight. <laughs> Unless you go to chaos. <laughs> All right. So wait, what were you saying? Um, so I was wondering what, if Charlotte was going to have sex or not, I was like, oh, I wonder if she'll just be like, oh, I'll just do it for the night. And it's like, we'll have a good time. Or if she, and she went, it was good TV. Cause she was like, I'm out of here. And then it was ro- like romance. And I was like, I'm going to call you. And then he hops in. And he's like, him just saying, hopping in the cab and saying, I need to have sex tonight, obviously was a little over the top, which is fine for Not TV. Not for Capote. Not for Capote. <laughs> but I feel like if you were to do that in real life, I could imagine doing that in real life and not saying that, but just being like, I actually, I'd like to get, I'm, I'm, I'm meeting just, up with some friends. I'm meeting up I, with some friends. Or, or like, I, to be honest, I, I had a great time, but I kind of want to, yeah, go out, meet, with, meet up with I some have friends. had some dates like that that I'm like, it ends at like 1030 or something. I'm like, all right, bye. And then I'm like, you look guess all, what, Corey? Where are you at? And it's like meet up with people, and I'm there making out with Skipper on a wall. <laughs> I do. Um, th- I think we haven't touched on Skipper yet, but yeah. Mm. And you know what? Well, that's the e- even by the end of the entire series, I doubt we will. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, so what? What is what is Miranda? Miranda is an asshole. First off, like, she that, is. that first date with Skipper, like yeah. she is just. She, she is, is just and Carrie. Out of my Carrie heart. knew that that was going to happen. Carrie right. was like, "She's going to hate him. She's she's going to get it all wrong." Because Skipper's a really nice dude. Mm-hmm. How does their thing end up? They uh, end up making out, uh, making out on a wall, making out on the wall outside of chaos. That's it, though, and then it's over. I, yeah. I imagine Skipper just wanted to get out of chaos. I don't. I don't feel like Skipper's <laughs> feel fitting like in well in, in chaos. That's true. Yeah. Listen, Skipper may be nice, but they they go hard on like he's looking at Mad TV. He's he has a Mad TV article like the first time he talks to camera. He's just on his computer reading Mad TV. Wait, really? Oh yeah, not Mad TV. Um, Mad, 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 Magazine. Mad Magazine. Mad Magazine. Yeah. He, the, the other guys are like do making sales in their offices. Yeah. Or, it's or just, it's or literally just Wolf of Wall Street pushing up bait. weights. Yeah. And yeah. Poor poor Skipper is just the funny thing though is twenty years later. I mean Skipper is is Skipper's Elon, he's game. Elon Musk right now. Yeah. Like Skipper, he took that knowledge and he invented Bitcoin and he is and SpaceX. Yeah. And those guys are now his accountants. Exactly. Yeah. I went to Comic Con with Corey this past weekend though, and there is it's sort of like we run the world now, but it's also like yeah, but. You can't just say it. There's some, <laughs> yeah. Just... There, it's like, look, our culture won. Comic books win, but then there would be just 300 pound people charging their phone, like eating, lying ground, lying on the ground at the Javits Center, and it was just like looking at two things. Like one, you're, yeah, all of the things you watch like are the most popular, and also there's still like. And tell them about the sexual harassment policy. Oh, there was Comic-Con. a huge. There's a huge, which it it honestly it really makes sense on the Comic Con app. There's like panels, guests, entertainment, and then there's just a huge thing at the bottom that says sexual harassment panel or sexual harassment policy. And it's a huge policy. It's a about bigger like, button than even the oh, schedule. Great. And it's like uh, anti-stalking, anti stalking. because when people are in cosplay, you got to think that like people. I was really impressed at Comic Con sidebar. I was really impressed by. It is like a very open thing where it's like, hey, you're so-and-so. Let's get a picture. And everyone's like totally like everyone is so game to do that. But I can imagine so much weird sketchiness has gone down in the past where it's like. Especially because hey, a lot of the characters that they're cosplaying are probably like so in, in situations that are not great. They're probably like, you know, either getting like like fighting or like getting tossed around. Right. And so I bet some of these people see these individuals dressed up as those characters and you don't want to either reenact it or approach them or yeah. touch them. And it's, it's necessary. Well, yeah. it, it, absolutely necessary. And it's great. This <laughs> it's, is a great skipper sidebar guys, this is but it's like a well, real question. It's funny. Watch it be at comic con. Probably. Yeah. I mean, I guess you said Elon Musk and I'm like, yeah, fat nerds. And it's like that dude's going to literally invent the moon. So they're not the same people, but it is funny watching just like, I guess they're still nerds, but it's like, I don't know. I feel like he, the Skipper character, I feel like by this point maybe has a little more capital than they gave him in the pilot of this. 
Yeah. Socially. Yeah, 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 yeah. Socially, things have upended. Well, I even thought this. Is he in the rest of the series? I don't know. I don't know. Socially, I think, if you look like Girls, which just ended last season, mm. or this year, I guess, but Girls was kind of like- the With the new- election of Donald Trump. Girls <laughs> are done. Correct, <laughs> exactly. Donald Trump has outlawed being a woman. You um, mean the series? The right? series, Girls. Yes, yes, sorry, yes, yes. The HBO series, Girls, was kind of, in some ways, sort of the new Sex in the City. You could argue that it's yeah, like yeah. an archetypal mm-hmm. kind of thing. And it's focusing on like- like people have way less money on, in it. It's like struggling for younger girls. Yeah. Uh, guys tend to be these like more man boys. Even like they were say the guy was like, you're in your mid thirties romp or whatever. When those dudes were lifting weights. Yeah. And I was like, mid 30 year olds don't look like that anymore. Mid 30 year olds look like, you know, you have a beard, like you look like an older boy. That's yeah. like a stylish thing to be a mid thirty year old. Yeah, I mean, not for. Do everyone, you think once again that's I, just the circles that we are in? Or very is that, possible. Is like, cause totally I, I possible. This, I was I was down in Wall Street, which we today. should all maybe say. Sorry, no, 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 we should all say like we all three live in Brooklyn. Mm-hmm. We we none of us like work in finance. None mm-hmm. of us have like alpha jobs. Right. We know people that do, right. but we don't really run in that circle. So mm-hmm. it that that could be. Yeah, I, I was in Wall Street today, and I saw probably like a twenty four year old just power power wall street guy you know yeah. suit perfect tie screaming on his phone in the subway and so i think those those people are still out there oh That's for sure true. for sure it's just a different i guess if a show as big and relevant and like literally wrote the script for what people think of in new york city for a whole generation which sex in the city is i feel like that wouldn't be the main mm-hmm. story that right. was told just from this this episode was definitely like oh, that's the dream of New York City from this time, mm-hmm. and a huge archetype which now is not as it's I, I don't know I do hope that that is our main audience I hope those you know, people I, yeah I yeah. hope I hope like like every finance office in the country like the guys are just sitting around a water cooler talking about. Our podcast that would make me really happy. Did I would you love uh, that? Did you listen to Bradshaw Boys? Because they really <laughs> they went hard on us in the first episode. They went but really hard on us, but I thought, somehow I I got, I'd like to get in. a beer with them. Then they kept on dropping Capote, and we we're like, they know Capote. They've really yeah. built the legend of Capote Duncan. It's uh, the fanfic is out there. He's, you <laughs> know, he's the world. You know. it's such world building. Uh, I, okay, so wait, we're so where are we? Like. In the episode at this point. Like, I, I guess we can skip it. We go to chaos. Well, Saman- what ends up happening is that Mr. Big's at the club. Mm-hmm. Samantha goes up to hit on him, and mm-hmm. he's like, no. No, he no thanks. Cohibas. He bounces. Uh, Samantha ends up with Capote Duncan. Of Sleep course. Duncan. No, yeah. incorrect. She ends up with, you're right. Yeah. With, or was it Kurt? Who ends up no, with Kurt Harrington? No, she ends up with Capote. Harrington. No you're one right. ends up with Kurt Harrington. Alone. Kurt Harrington ends up alone. He got played. He Carrie is that, really played him. Is there some him. symbolism there? Is that like is that is that how the women are feeling? Because if if Carrie I think was Kurt, like if Carrie was acting like the man in that relationship, and uh-huh. Kurt was acting like the like the woman, is that is that where maybe at? because you got to think our first woman Elizabeth, the British woman, kind of got as far as we know, kind of got chucked and was alone. She got Harrington. She got Harrington. She didn't yeah. get Duncan. No, Samantha got Duncan. Uh, but uh, but so Samantha, Samantha ends up with Samantha Duncan. ends up with Duncan. But even there's like a little hint of sadness with Samantha because Duncan gives her the line that Charlotte gave him. He was like, "I got to get up really early so you can't sleep over." See, I thought she was like, into "You thought that. She, I thought yeah. she maybe I'm too." I mean, that's what she's looking maybe I'm for. too personal. Or, or maybe emotional. you're maybe you're like like meta like looking in the layers like maybe I might deep be down. I might be reading into it, but deep. Deep down, I feel like what makes Samantha interesting is like she has way more humanity than you would give her. You just think like, oh, whatever, she doesn't care. I feel like she's like strong enough to not care, but I feel like she really wants that. I don't know. I could be totally reading into it. Mm. I know nothing about. I know just know Samantha is the sexy character. Like mm-hmm. from everyone's like, where's Samantha? How she's- many different locations do you know where she's had sex throughout the city, though? Um, I I think I always. Of, I don't know if I have a lot of Samantha information on the tour. I'll get the script up from the tour and we'll read oh, some man. F- from it. But I can't wait to read it. I do think that um, there was seemed like a hint of sadness, mm. but then also just like who cares? This is this is what I wanted. But 
I'm sure someone could be like, that's not, that's not who Smith. But then again, we're watching like not the fully formed characters yet that everyone ends up knowing. But at least for that, I feel like the direction was like, and let there be like just a little moment where yeah. you, because I saw that too. And I didn't expect that from what I've known through culture about Samantha. Or maybe it wasn't even sadness. Maybe it was just like, all right, I get it. This is a no strings attached thing. And I'm down for that too. Yeah. And then that's just, that's the understanding. Yeah. And then, so, okay, so we covered that. And then the big twist. The big twist. The big twist is Carrie goes, leaves the club by herself, and then. Can't get a cab. Can't get a cab. And that would be the worst thing, walking home. Yeah. That's what she says. And, yeah. And is true. And you experience that when, like, if there's, like, a huge Uber surge or something now, because. I'm walking home tonight, and I'm looking forward to it. I'm and I'm looking forward to walking home with you for some of those blocks. Yeah. Um. Carry and then who pulls up in a Cadillac? Mister Big. Mister Big. Mister Big. And by Mister Big, we don't mean our Mister Big Capote Duncan. <laughs> we mean the real Mister Big Christopher Noth. Christopher Noth. Uh, what a legend! What a legend! He is. He, I didn't. Yeah. He's, he's a great character. He started that great storytelling show, The Noth. Is that what it is? Gosh. Is it the Noth? Are we oh, all going as Mr. Big for Halloween yes, this year? Yes, we are now. <laughs> all three of us. We're recording this in October, and I can't wait. If that's just me putting on a suit, <laughs> people will be like, are you Ron Howard? <laughs> like, no, I'm Mr. Big. I have a suit on. They're like, you just look like Ron Howard. You can't do that. You look like Ron Howard as a kid in a too big suit. No, I, I'm Mr. Big. I, I was taking a, a lot of notes in the show, but um, so I didn't. Not sure if I noticed it all, but was he a big? He was a big waver. Like he would, he would always kind of. Like, he did a lot of like, weird waves. Yeah, like that was his, is that his thing? I I guess it's like a weird, playful little like. It seems like a power move, but it's I th- odd. I think what we so so I, I'm in a relationship, Corey. You're in a relationship. I'm in a relationship. But Kevin's not. John's married. Yeah, John's I'm married. married. I have a girlfriend. And so what I think we should do is we should take some notes from some of these gentlemen and do some field testing. We'll get Kevin out there waving, and we'll get him. Waving, we'll yep. get him uh, dropping some lines that we saw in Sex and the City, and see if you know, see if he's successful. We Kevin, could do a field piece. We could do a field piece, do an audio field piece. I'll say this: I would love for this to happen. We just send Kevin out in situations, like ordering dinner or going to a counter to buy a drink, and whenever anyone responds to you, your answer has to be, "I I'm gotta so have fun. sex <laughs> tonight." <laughs> Sorry, we were not on the same page. <laughs> I thought you were going to go absolutely. You oh, went. Well, that would work. I went with a. Well, I went with my hero, Capote Duncan. Wait, but so any t- any time he buy he buys anything, anytime <laughs> anyone asks him a question at all, it's just absolutely. I think that would work. I was going to so say I have to I'm have so sex into tonight, that, but I think I think we need to do better. that with in our relationships too and report back. <laughs> it won't go well, uh, honey. Can you take out the trash? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> um, um, yeah. So, but yeah, she ends up. She, uh, we. I don't. Have we really described that moment with Big? We've said it a million times. But well, he. If he, you haven't watched the episode, what's, what's you don't he, know what happens. What's he answering? He rolls up. She. She gets in. The, oh, she gets in the cab. They talk. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And yeah. then he drops her off. Well, he 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 says the reason that you've never you've never been in love. No, he no. asks her if he's ever been. Yeah, she's yeah, ever yeah. been in love. Yeah. And, and she it, says no. And, and then, then she gets out and asks him if he's ever been in love. And, and then he, he says, answers. Absolutely. Which and is it's, amazing. And it's, it's a, not it's not about a relationship. It's about them tasty cohibas. <laughs> <laughs> he's just talking about smoking I mean, a tasty cohibas. He's just got a thought bubble of of those cohiba cigars. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> love a cohiba. It definitely gives him like an interesting angle of like, oh, I want to know more about this guy right off the bat. And f- from what I know about Sex and City, we'll learn a lot more. About oh, we'll learn a lot more, Mister well, Big. He, he is a cultural icon. He's he up. He's up there with like Gandalf, Yoda, Mister Big. I think he's. He is. I mean, he is a force. Everyone. <laughs> he is. Everyone knows who Mister Big is. Or if someone, I've heard people just be like, "That's your Mister Big." Yeah. Uh, we didn't talk about this, but Mr. Big, uh, is referred to as the next Donald Trump. Yeah. Very interesting. Very interesting. In a, in a, in a very positive way. Yeah. 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 Like he's, he's, uh, do they say he's into real estate? Samantha says something about how he's like the next Donald Trump. Yeah. It says he's, when they're he's in chaos. Wealthy. Yeah. Uh, 
I, I'm not sure if she describes him at that point as handsome. Carrie did when she first ran into him. Yeah. Next, next Donald Trump, but younger. Yeah, that's Which just is yeah. so interesting. Yeah, and then they also describe Samantha as someone who has like charisma and like the guts, like the way Ross Perot could run for president. Didn't mm-hmm. they say that about Samantha? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which Kevin made the point. The way Ross Perot could run for president, you were like, that's what Donald Trump just did. Yeah. He had like the blind confidence to run for president and then won. Yeah. Which is something Ross Perot And that do. was the joke with Ross Perot. It's like, oh, you're going to do it. Of course you'll lose. Yeah, right. exactly. Was, um, we're, we, let's wrap it up because uh, we're, we're at about an hour. Yeah. Oof. Yeah. So let's. So much. Let's There's cover, so much to talk about. There's a lot to talk about. Um, um, we'll keep notes uh, each week, and we can, you know, maybe carry on. I mean, I carry on. Ooh, um, I feel like we can. Uh, Why don't we each go and, and maybe give like a thirty second cl- kind of closing thought? Yeah, I- I'll, I'll go first. So, something that was kind of uh, surprising to me is uh, is where women were at while that show that sh- was taped. It was taped in nineteen ninety eight, and I think. Uh, it was a very important show culturally. It really uh, helped women kind of move another step forward in their journey to becoming strong, independent, awesome people that they are. Yeah. Uh, and I feel like where we are in our political climate and and our culture now is that they've kind of it's it feels like it's taken a step back, and that makes me really sad to think that in 1998 we were progressive and and moving forward, and the show was kind of painting a picture of, of these powerful independent women and now i'm not sure it's because we have these uh leaders in place or whatever it is but it feels different it feels like once again kind of women have been uh taking a step back and that makes that makes me sad yeah um that those are my, those are like my thoughts while watching that i'm not sure um mine were and so it New York feels like it's in a time capsule because it is. It's in a whole different place. Like you can smoke in places. It also is a different New York, like we said, than what we showed up to and what we live in now mm-hmm. and what we, I, what I'm guessing we've ever really been involved with for the most part. Um, and I think it's the same way that women were involved in New York then, at least these four characters, that they were, they're chasing after these like powerful men, but clearly they're not happy about it Mm -hmm. um and i think the archetypes of the female characters i'm interested because they're older uh older meaning like in their mid-30s they're not like just out of college and it's showing their struggles um and also i'm interested in the archetypes of positive males because it seems like skipper is kind of a positive male but a total wimp they're just like and and big mr big is a positive male but this weird mystery who also like smoke cigars mm-hmm. and like won't talk to you. So I'm interested to see like what an interesting and male big is here. Too. And just huge on the hand motions. Yeah. And um I really do feel like if I had to come away with like a huge final thought, I don't know. I mean I feel like I could sum it up in two words and it would be Capote Duncan. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's what I would <laughs> end up. He he's he made an impact on all of us. Oh yeah. Um I think uh final thoughts I was I enjoyed it. It's I I to- immediately I understand why this show is significant because I'm like, yeah, it was pretty easy to talk about the show for an hour because it hits on mm-hmm. sex, it hits on relationships, it hits on the city that it's like we live we live here, but even if you don't like the amount of people that are intrigued by New York City and we're before the show, but after the show, I mm-hmm. feel like this is this is the most iconic thing about New York City. But even before that, it was like, if there was a movie, it was like, oh my gosh, it's New York City has so much mystique and like history. And so I can just tell watching it be like, oh yeah, it's, I can tell why this captured the world's imagination mm-hmm. by the end of it. And um, I was just in a few short lines, like seeing how all of them right off the bat are pretty fully formed characters. And I was just, big surprise that mr big was in the very first episode and was intriguing and um and uh and yeah i was surprised at how much i enjoyed it and how little my like uh i i want i was planning on playing the devil's advocate (laughs) after watching it more than i ended up being able to do because i wouldn't be like 
it doesn't hold up or whatever. And I was like, oh, no, this is great. Yeah. So I was surprised at how enjoyable it was. Mm-hmm. So Awesome. Um, well, we, um, we'll be back. We're going to watch the next episode uh, soon. I have a... I have big news next for our next episode. Yeah. yeah. I just thought of it and really, really excited to share it. So For the next episode? Yes. That's great. Damn. All right. Well, hey, uh, thank you, everyone, for listening. We're looking forward to doing the next one. Did we all have a really great time? Absolutely. I have to have sex tonight. <laughs> there we go. Capote Duncan. The Bradshaw Boys stars Corey Cavan, John Sieber, and Kevin James Doyle. The show is produced by Jeremy L. Balin. For more information on the guys, check out their website at bradshawboys.com, on social media at the Bradshaw Boys. And if you see them in the street, tip your glass. Thanks for listening.